Hello again and welcome back to Operations Management. We're continuing our sessions on statistical process control and in this session we're going to be talking about how we can create the control limits for both X-bar and R charts. If you recall, X-bar and R charts are always used together. They're used for variables inspection and the X-bar chart will indicate changes in the mean, which is the central tendency of the process, whereas the R chart tracks the range within a sample, so that monitors the dispersion. They're always used together, so we have a much better view of the process. When we look at the X-bar chart, we're going to create an upper control limit by using the mean plus three standard deviations above the mean, and for the lower control limit, it's going to be the mean minus three standard deviations. Now, you see I have Z here because sometimes people use a number other than three standard deviations, although three is normal for this kind of uh, chart. Now, when we do the standard deviation, we're actually using the standard error, which is the sampling distribution of the mean standard deviation. And that's calculated by taking the population standard deviation and dividing it by the square root of the sample size. So let's do an example. Here we have the LRDR company and it produces a candy bar that has an average weight of 10 ounces with a standard deviation of 0.2. The company wants to monitor the process that makes these bars. So they're going to collect data samples. They're going to use a sample size of 16 and they want to create control limits of three standard deviations. So we'll calculate both the upper and lower control limits for this X-bar chart. The average weight, the mean, is 10 ounces. The standard deviation for the population is 0.2 ounces, and we're using a sample size of 16. So to create the upper and lower control limits, we're going to take the mean and add to it three standard deviations above the mean. But remember, we have to calculate that standard deviation by using the population standard deviation of 0.2 and dividing it by the square root of the sample size 16. So we have 10 plus 3 times 0.2 divided by the square root of 16, which is 10.15. The lower control limit is calculated in a similar fashion, only we're starting with the mean and we're subtracting the three standard deviations. So that gives us 9.85. So now you can imagine a control chart that has a lower line of 9.85, an upper line of 10.15. When we collect data and we take the means of those samples and we plot it on the chart, as long as those data points fall between 9.85 and 10.15, everything looks fine. But in conjunction with the X-bar chart, we have to take a look at the range of the data. So we're going to calculate the upper and lower control limits of the range in a similar fashion to the X-bar chart. We're going to take the range mean plus three standard deviations of the range standard deviation. So we have R-bar plus three times the standard deviation of the range and R-bar minus three times the standard deviation of the range. Using the same process, now we know that the average weight range of the candy bar is 0.15 ounces, with the standard deviation of the range being 0.03 ounces. Now the company is monitoring this process for the range. We're using the same sample size of 16, and we're still going to use three sigma control limits. So we're going to create the upper and lower control limits for the R chart. The average weight range is 0.15 ounces, and the standard deviation of that range is 0.03, and our sample size is 16. So we're going to create our upper and lower control limits. So it's 0.15 plus 3 times 0.03, which is 0.24, and the lower control limit is 0.15 minus 3 times 0.03, which is 0.06. So again, imagine the control chart. The lower line is 0.06, the upper line is 0.24. As long as when we calculate the ranges of our samples, those data points fall between 0.06 and 0.24, we say our process is doing fine. 
But remember, X bar and R charts are always used in conjunction with each other. So if there is even one data point that falls outside the control limits on either chart, then the process is not considered in control and we have to go look for a cause for that variation. In our next session, we're going to be taking a look at control charts for attributes, which would be the C chart and the P chart. I'll see you then.